Hey guys, welcome back to DCS World. I'm Spud Knocker, as always. And today, we're taking a look at something that I've been waiting for a good long time now for the Harrier, and that is launching AGM-65 E-Mavericks. These Mavericks are laser-guided, and as a result, they are much more flexible because you can zoom in real far with the targeting pod and be more selective with your targeting. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and hop in the cockpit and get started. So we've got a few targets set up for us out here on Greater Tomb Island. We've got a couple M60 Patton tanks, a couple transport trucks, and a couple Grad Launcher rocket rockets. I just totally butchered that. Grad Rocket Launchers, there we go. So you can tell I'm, uh, I'm live here. So I think the AGM-65E is going to be a fan favorite uh, among DCS World players, and that is because it's just very flexible, because you can use your targeting pod uh, to designate targets for the missile, instead of just using the onboard sensor on the missile, like you would have to use with the uh, TV or IR-guided Mavericks. Now, of course, that's not a bad thing about those Mavericks, it's just a reality of what you got to do with those. So we'll go ahead and bring up our targeting pod, take her out of standby, and we can see Greater Tomb all the way out there. So while we're flying out to Greater Tomb Island, uh, we'll go ahead and talk about the basics of firing an LMAV. So we'll go ahead and head back to the stores page. So when you hit your LMAV on your stores page, or in your EW page, or your HSI page, or whichever way you select it, you'll be brought directly to the Laser Guided Maverick uh, MFD page. And on this page, to start off, you just see your laser code, which you can change by hitting the code button to change the code on the UFC. It's really important if you're working with a JTAC. Not quite as important if you're self-lazing like we will be doing here. And then once you uncage the Maverick, you'll get this uh, crosshair. This crosshair, uh, when you don't have a laser emitting or it's not picking up a laser, we'll have this little X guy moving back and forth. That's also on your HUD. That's just to let you know it's not tracking any laser. So we'll go ahead and recage this MAV and we'll start getting a picture on our targeting pod. So we'll go ahead and pre-zoom this guy in. Also something worth noting, I was having a heck of a time with the targeting pod. So it looks like we already got some targets here. After the update that came with the Persian Gulf map, and I think that was due to the fact that when you are updating a module and getting files, overwriting files, overwriting files, overwriting files, just over and over again, you can create bugs in that way. So what I did was I went into my module manager and I simply deleted my Harrier from my install, deleted all the files related to the Harrier, and then simply reinstalled it through the module manager. And that seemed to take care of any remaining bugs and things of that nature. So first thing we're going to target here is these two M60s. So, we'll, yep, those are definitely tanks. We'll go ahead and fire our laser. Just making sure we were in master arm on. So once we fire our laser on our MAV page, we're going to get this uh, big, big old uh, bright spot. That bright spot is a representation of the laser spot on, from our T-Pod or from your JTAC in time and space. And so when you move your crosshair over that uh, spot, you'll get a, you'll be aiming the missile directly at that spot. So as we, as we go nose down here, you can see that spot coming into the crosshair. But we won't go full nose down just yet. Because Mavericks can be kind of slow, I tend to like to release them a little bit closer to the target. But we'll go ahead and rifle her right now. So rifle. And we'll clean up our picture. 
you want to laze the bottom part of the target, uh, usually with the LMAVs, because you tend to get uh, shots going long if you're lazing the top portion of the target. So we'll go ahead and throw the labels on here so you guys can see a little bit better. There goes our MAV. And coming close. Shack. We got him. So we go ahead and stow our laser. So we've got a nice bright sunny day here. So it's very easy to use our CCD mode on our targeting pod. If it were nighttime or maybe a little bit worse weather, we would probably throw it over into FLIR mode. Uh, but that doesn't seem to be super necessary at the moment. So we'll fly out, give us a, some spacing. So a cool little tidbit is the original AGM-65E could not be used in self-laze mode. You cannot self-laze the target. You'd either have to have a buddy laze from another aircraft or from a JTAC on the ground. However, the fact that we can self-laze here in DCS world means we're employing the second generation of laser guided Maverick, the AGM-65E2, which I think is a really good thing because the ability to self-laze here in DCS world just makes it a better weapon for being a game. And like I said at the start of the video, it's something that I've really been looking forward to in terms of capabilities for the Harrier. All right, we'll go after the second tank. We'll go ahead and fire our laser, uncage our Maverick, put in a little bit more trim so we can get a better flight path to target. Sweeten up that spot a bit. And just like before, we can see the laser spot on our Maverick scope. Push the nose over a little bit. And we've got lots of altitude this time, so we can go ahead and rifle. One thing to be wary of is that these Mavericks are not fire and forget. You have to be maintaining that laser lock on target the entire flight path of the missile. And in the Harrier, you have to be careful because we have those gun pods or the fairings on either side of the missile, or sorry, the targeting pod. Shack, perfect. So we can see that tank is definitely dead. Stow our laser. So as we can see on the belly of the airplane, we see our targeting pod as well as the two gun pods. Those gun pods have a tendency to block the field of view of our targeting pod. Hey, that's cool. First time I've seen one of the auto-generated tankers. It is really hard not to love DCS World, that's for sure. But anyway, back to the targeting pod. It's very easy to block the field of view of your laser or the camera on your targeting pod with those gun pods or your, the fairings. So you can't really pull too hard of maneuvers after you release your LMAV or your laser guided bomb, or you risk breaking the laser lock on the target and thus the missile or bomb will not impact the target. So we'll come back around. I don't know if I'm just seeing things, but it feels like the the trim system in the Harrier has been updated a little bit since this last release. It feels a lot better and a lot crisper anyway. 
I could be making things up, of course. I haven't flown in about a week now due to uh, studying for finals. Alrighty. We'll go ahead and fire a missile. Rifle three. So that idea of being wary of where our TGP is looking in terms of the fairings on our belly is really important, especially for down low like this, where we may be encountering weapons fire. So it looks like we missed. I guess we had our targeting point a little bit too, too high on the target from our vantage point. And so the missile just missed, just flew right over the top of it. And it doesn't look like he's smoking either. So we'll probably have to re-attack that target. Let's go ahead and take a look. That was really close. I am sure that dude on the top there on that M2 is not happy. In real life, of course, he would be dead. So it'll give us a little bit of extra room. I find in a lot of ways that the LMAVs are a lot easier to employ than an, an LGB. So if you're a new uh, Harrier pilot in DCS World, I would actually practice using the laser-guided Mavericks uh, before you jump over to laser-guided bombs. And the reason for that is our Maverick scope that we have here on our MFD. That way you know your missile is locked onto a laser. And you're not kind of hoping and praying that your missile found the laser like you are when it, with an LGB kind of have to be 100% sure you made all of the right uh, switchology moves and all these kinds of things when you're firing a laser guided bomb as there's no real indication that tells you whether or not that laser is tracking the target. So we just sweetened the laser spot a little bit. Hopefully we can get a shack on this guy. Boom. There we go. Shack number three. So we'll go ahead and stow our pod. Take it out of master arm. Go back to our electronic horizontal situation display. And we'll head home to the UAE. So as always guys, thanks for watching. I hope this quick little tutorial will show you that it's quite easy to employ laser guided Mavericks. At least a lot easier than laser guided bombs in my opinion. And it's just been a, a feature that I've been waiting for the Harrier for a long time now. And I hope you guys enjoy it. I think it's definitely gonna be a fan favorite weapon, especially for the Harrier. So I hope this video helped you guys. If it did, please give me a like and a subscribe. And as always, fly safe, guys.